from Elysio Bishop is going to jail. I'm going to say Elysio Bishop is going to prison. That's what I'm going to say now. Elysio Bishop is going to prison. That's what I'm going to say now. I'm put in there. And she gave me the rights to have it. It was educational. She said I can post that. I didn't know I couldn't post it when she left. She didn't say take my stuff off. She didn't ask me to take it off. It was up there. She's trying to act like that was... That's that's my property. That's my property. That's my art. What's talking about? That's my art. That's sex education. That's my art. That's my property. What are you talking about? She agrees. She has to prove that it was against her consent. I have evidence that it wasn't. The video itself will prove that it wasn't against her consent. Because in the video, she's literally saying, oh my God, this is helping me so much. It's sexual education in the fucking video, dickhead. It's not like a porno scene that I put out and I'm trying to humiliate her. No, nigga. Nah, what we got? Case of DVD. It doesn't mean nothing. We already said that the video was mine. She said she didn't say I couldn't post it. You know what I'm saying? She didn't say I couldn't post it. And this is what it is. And whether or not, even if she left, so what? It's my content. It's my content. She agreed to that content. It is legally my property. She did not say I couldn't do it. She was consenting to it. She didn't ask me to take it down. It's been up there and it wasn't for any intent to do anything but educate or show what I'm doing. And I can prove that from not only from the video, I can prove it with my dick. <laughs> hey, we're good. We're good. We're good. Yo. Get my wallet. Get my wallet. My phone. They breaking the door open. Yo. We're good. We're good. We're coming out. We're coming out. We're good. We're coming out. No need to break anything. Don't shoot. We got a baby. We got a baby there. Can you please put the client, sir? We don't want no problem. We good. Hi, right, Mr. Bishop. You are charged in case number 22 025579, warrants 22W5454359, with a prohibition on sexually explicit transmissions, three counts of that one count of rape and one count of false imprisonment. The cause of those charges, I'm not able to set a bond in your case. So your attorney is going to follow up with you about filing a motion for bond in Superior Court. But that's going to be all we can do for you today. Outstanding. of that day, the defendant brought her to his room and proceeded to rape her. She talks about how she told him no multiple times, that she did not want to have sex with him, but that he proceeded to do so despite her saying no. Um, specifically, he told her that she was his property and that he could not leave. The defendant then proceeded to rape her in the room. Um, the victim disclosed to law enforcement how her body tensed up and she was not cooperating. And at that time, the defendant even physically had to turn her over to continue the acts of penetration. At that point, she was crying and wanted to leave, but felt like she could not leave because she was fearful of the defendant and because of how manipulative he is. Um, they ended up going to sleep, and at the middle of the night into the early next morning, the victim was able to leave, and then she contacted law enforcement to tell them about what happened. When law enforcement received this request, they then... Um, go to the house where this incident alleged, where the incident occurred. And when they go to the house, they encounter multiple individuals, possibly about 15 individuals. 
The reason they're going to the house is because when the victim came forward, she also tells the police that the defendant ended up posting sexually explicit videos of them engaging in sexual intercourse on social media as an act of revenge for her leaving the cult. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, The alleged facts in this case, uh, they grab your attention, Judge. Um, You might even call them shocking. But what I uh, am going to ask that the court uh, does here um, is see past those allegations because Mr. Bishop does remain uh, cloaked in the presumption of innocence, as the court is aware. And instead, I ask uh, that the court laser focus on the Iyala factors um, and consider granting uh, Mr. Bishop a bond. Uh, Mr. Bishop uh, is originally from New York City, Judge. Uh, He moved to Atlanta about 20 years ago. Um, He's been based in Atlanta uh, ever since then, Um, even though he has done some traveling, as the state spoke about, um, Atlanta is where Mr. Bishop hangs his hat. Um, Mr. Bishop just turned 40 in the jail on April 29th. He did spend some time in the Army judge um, before being medically discharged in the 2000s. Um, After being discharged, he did get his high school diploma through Job Corps. Uh, Mr. Bishop uh, has always been gainfully employed. He got his barber's license Um, after getting his high school diploma. He opened a barber shop in 2013. It's called Bishop's. HD cuts. He sold that business in 2015, Judge, but it's still uh, it's still local, still being run, um, although no longer uh, by Mr. Bishop. Uh, Mr. Bishop does have a stable address in Decatur, Georgia. He's currently one year into a two year lease, Judge. Um, that's where uh, the warrants in this case were executed at that apartment complex in Decatur, and that's where he would uh, plan to continue to stay uh, when and if he's able to bond out uh, of DeKalb County Jail. Your Honor, uh, Mr. Bishop is suffering from extreme uh, dental issues in jail. He has a, uh, a tooth that is decayed down to the root that's causing him extreme pain. Um, he has sought medical care for that uh, situation, uh, and all that he's been able to, um, to get for a response is that there's currently a long waiting list at the jail uh, to be seen for that sort of issue, Judge. I understand that the state does have concerns about Mr. Bishop being flight risk. Um, In order to allay those fears, uh, the defense has no objection um, to house arrest being a condition of bond. We would not object to an ankle monitor. Um, Of course, we would ask that the court allow Mr. Bishop uh, to leave his house indicator uh, to meet with his attorneys for medical care. Um, for anything else, um, that's absolutely vital, Judge. Um, Mr. Bishop uh, does have uh, significant um, support here. I believe his friend Aaron Dixon. Mr. Dixon, are you on the call? Might not be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here. He is. Uh, this is Mr. Aaron Dixon, Judge. Uh, he is a friend. Of Mr. Bishop, uh, he's here to to show his support for Mr. Bishop. Um, so, in light of uh, Mr. Bishop's significant ties to the area, um, in light of the fact um, that he has uh, been a productive uh, member of society and that he has uh, opened a successful business, sold it, in light of the uh, medical issues that Mr. Bishop is currently dealing with in the DeKalb County Jail. Uh, we would ask that the court grant a bond in the amount of fifty thousand um, dollars. Having heard argument from counsel, um, the motion for bond is going to be denied. Uh, I do find the defendant to be a danger to the community, um, a risk to intimidating the victim. Uh, there is also a risk of flight and uh, also the risk of committing an additional felony. So therefore, bond will be denied. That will conclude its hearing. Ms. Pazmino. Thank you, Your Honor. Detective Panosian, can you please raise your right hand?
do you swear or affirm that the testimony shall give this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Lower your hand. Can you please state your name and where you are employed? Detective Monica Panosian. I work for DeKalb County Police Department under their Special Victims Unit. And as working with the Special Victims Unit, were you assigned to a case involving Eligio Bishop? Yes, ma'am. Can you please tell the court when you were assigned to that case? I was assigned that case after March 30th, 2022, when the initial report was. Now, you stated that Ms. Newell said that Mr. Bishop was doing this as revenge porn. Can you further elaborate to the court why she said that? She stated on 324, she left after um, another incident had occurred. She stated she disconnected all contact with him and the rest of the group that lived at the location. And she believes he was doing it to taunt her. So kind of a form of harassment for her leaving? Yes, ma'am. After observing those videos, did you or other members of your agency speak with Ms. Newell in reference to any other incidents that occurred between her and Mr. Bishop? Yes, ma'am. Myself and Detective Moore went to Fayetteville and spoke with Ms. Bishop, uh, excuse me, Ms. Newell. And what did you learn upon speaking with her? On seven, correction, 4 7 myself and Detective Moore spoke with her. She stated she was part of a sex cult. Um, she stated she has been involved with this cult for three to four years and has lived with them about twice before. She stated um, in the early hours of 3-24-22, um, Mr. Bishop was upset with her because she was making a face at him and wasn't keeping what he called the tune of the group. She stated he began to order two other women named Afuro and Zoka to hit her. She stated the women began to smack the back of her neck and she stood up. She stated she told them to stop and Mr. Bishop became upset. They continued and pushed her against the wall and began to scream at her. She stated she went into the kneeling position and stopped arguing with them. She stated she told them she wanted to leave, and Mr. Bishop told her to pack her stuff. She stated she began to pack two suitcases, and the two women, Afuro and Zoka, continued to call her name and yell, yell at her. Another male resident had to come into the room and calm down the situation. She stated she packed her items and had to stand in front of the group that's about 14 other people that lives at the location and stand in front of them and wait for her Uber to pick her up. She stated while she was in front of the group, they began to tell her how it was a mistake to leave and she was evil if she was to leave. She stated the Uber arrived and she wanted to say goodbye to Mr. Bishop. Mr. Uh, Bishop. Detective uh, yes. Nozian, before you go on, at that point when she's trying to leave, was it your understanding from her statements that um, she kind of felt that she couldn't leave? She felt that if she left, she was essentially being evil to the group that she had been a part of. Okay. And now you said that before she left, um, she went to see Mr. Bishop. Are you aware if Mr. Bishop, if Mr. Bishop called for her to come see her before she left? He did state, he. He did tell her he wanted to see her before she left. Okay. So at that point, um, does she, um, she goes and sees him? Yes, ma'am. She stated okay. he was upstairs. She stated okay. when she went upstairs, Mr. Bishop pulled her into another room. He kept holding on to her and stated he did not want to, her to leave and to bring her stuff back inside. She stated she continued to tell him she wanted to leave and he became irate and became, began to tell her that she was his property. I'm gonna say, excuse my language because it's gonna become 
a little bit explicit. Um, she stated he began to tell her how she was his bitch and she was no longer allowed to leave. She stated she began to essentially beg him to leave and began to cry. She stated Mr. Bishop then began to attempt to have sex with her. She told him no and he continued. She stated she told him no multiple times, but he continued not to listen to her. And they proceeded to have sex because she knew she wasn't going to be allowed to leave. And um, while he while this conversation is going on, it's in a room with Mr. Bishop and Miss Newell, correct? Yes, ma'am. OK. And um, was she confined to that room and felt that she could not leave? She stated she did not feel like she could leave and he was holding on to her. Okay. Say again. While they, while Mr. Bishop proceeded to engage um, in intercourse with Ms. Newell, at any point did Ms. Newell tell you that she told him yes, she was, she told Mr. Bishop yes and wanted to have sex with him? No, ma'am. She stated she said no multiple times. Did she relay to you how she felt about Mr. Bishop as whether she could um, kind of escape the situation or um, do anything else while that was happening, while he was proceeding to rape her? She stated she didn't have fear that he would strike her, but he would order the other females to abuse her. She stated he had already done it that day and that she had fear for her safety. Well, I don't know. I can't see it. And she did also state to you that she was crying and upset while this was occurring, correct? Yes, ma'am, she did. Okay. After um, the incident happens in that room with Mr. Bishop and Miss Noel, um, what did Miss Noel do? She stated after they finished having sex, he ordered her to take a shower. She stated she had received multiple calls from the person who had actually ordered her the Uber and that she had contacted them and let them know she was going to have to sneak out and sneak away from the house. She stated she went to bed with the rest of the group and woke up in the early hours. It was only her and another person awake and the other person was in the shower. She stated she only grabbed one of the two suitcases she had packed and left the location without saying anything to anyone else. And when was, when she left, what date was that? She left on 3-24-2022, that's gonna be March 24th. Yeah, and she made a report back on March 30th, is that my recollection, March 30th, 2022? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And she informed you, when did she inform you that the videos were posted to social media again? She actually, in the initial report, had reported that it had been posted on social media. How many days after she left? Oh, you're Georgia. How many days after she left were they posted? The video was posted, correct. They were posted three days after three, she two, left. Zero, okay. And I forgot to ask you earlier, but what do you remember the Twitter username or handle that it was posted under? It was posted under at TH33 G O D underscore okay. and so essentially at um what could read as three god underscore yes ma'am and in your investigation was that a name that mr elijah bishop goes by or calls himself yes it is and in speaking with miss newell um did she inform you that Mr. Um, this was Mr. Bishop's Twitter profile or social media handle? Yes, ma'am. Seven two four seven six 
After taking Miss Newell's statements and observing these videos, did you end up taking out warrants against Mr. Elegio Bishop? Yes, ma'am. What were those warrants for? They were for, excuse me, let me get the specific wording. While you're looking that up, let me ask you, did you take out a warrant for rape? Yes, ma'am. And did you take out a warrant for false imprisonment? Yes, ma'am. And then did you take out three warrants for prohibition on nude or sexually explicit electronic transmissions? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, I'll just um, ask a few follow-up questions, just a few details that you may or may not know. Um, so, correction that you stated that um, um, your first contact with Miss Noel, um, you stated that she joined a sex cult, correct? That's what she called it, yes. All right, that's what she called it. And uh, may I get the uh, the statement date, the day that she gave the statement? It was 4-7 of 2022. Okay, so March 30th was the day that the report was made? I just want to make sure I got to correct the timeline. Yes, the initial report was made on March 30th. All right, so... Um, I noticed you you mentioned uh, the videos on on Twitter um, and that they can be uh, posted with consent and things of the nature. Um, on the videos, um, were there any captions attached to the videos? Initially, when you uh, essentially have to look at the post, it has a caption stating that you have to click this link. It is in has sensitive content. Um, and when a video, I'm assuming when you watch the video, was it just a video, any other wording around it, meaning like the hashtags or anything else associated with the video or just the video as it is with just me and you correct right now? I believe it was just the video. Um, I would have to double check the actual recording. So, okay. Um, you stated that you watched three videos, but believe it to be four, correct? She stated there were four, but I was only able to observe three. Yeah. And she told you that these videos were posted without her consent um, because she believed he, she was leaving or he was mad? She believed it as a form of taunting her. Okay. Um, would you find it to be the same like harassment? Yes. All right. Um, uh, you mentioned that there was a the, the this video. Well, from your observation, were you able to determine if this was from like a phone or like a studio type setting? I wouldn't be able to determine exactly what it was, but it appeared to me as a phone. Were any phones ever collected as far as the uh, search of Miss Delio's residence? Yes. All right. And was those phones? Uh, uh, as of now, according to your knowledge, have they been uh, downloaded and went through or opened up? Uh, from my knowledge, not yet. There, uh, I believe there is a search warrant being obtained shortly for that. Right. So other than the videos that's been on Twitter, there's no uh, other videos that would have maybe the full video or any other thing other than what you retrieve from Twitter? Not of my knowledge. Right. Um, is this the same video that, from your, your, your research, is this the same video that was um, was from the the day that they actually had sex before she left, like the night out, from your understanding? There was, I do not know the date that the video had been taken. I only know the date that it was posted on Twitter. Okay. So there's a possibility that this is another sexual encounter other than the one that is alleged here in the, the, uh, the charges? Yes. Okay. Uh, you stated that um, uh, at some point um, in this altercation that um, she was uh, assaulted by other members in, in the cult or the group. Yes. Uh, was there any follow-up investigation on, on, on that? 
Yes, we have uh, obtained multiple videos of Mr. Bishop actually ordering either females or males to hit the same sex, it, not necessarily just Miss Newell, but other members within the group. Miss Newell, it precisely gave you two, two names that uh, she alleged that was assaulting her on this particular day, correct? Yes. And was any follow up with those two people um, as far as obtaining a statement? to confirm if this actually was true or not? We attempted to make take a statement, but um, most of his members would not want to speak to us. Um, I, I noticed that um, in part of what you mentioned with Twitter is, is consent, right? Uh, consent between the two, correct? Yes. And you wouldn't have no idea to know if it was actual consensual between the two because you weren't there when he had you know, obviously has sex, but from your experience in the videos that you watch, um, the, the videos seem to- Objection, be... Your Honor, this isn't a call for speculation. I haven't heard the question yet, so let me hear the question. Uh, do you believe, uh, do you see any evidence in the videos that this video was not consensual between the two? All right, so objection. She, she's raised an objection. <laughs> Mr. Eady, what's your response to the objection? I'll reword it. Your Honor, if that's Mr. Eno's response, um, I'd still object saying that the answer, the question calls for an opinion, um, something that Detective Panosian would have no knowledge of in that moment. And so that is speculation and therefore he shouldn't be even allowed to ask that question. Eno, you want to respond? Oh, uh, no, I'll ask him the question. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you stated that uh, when you spoke to uh, Miss Newell, correct? Yes. Uh, that she stated she was crying and when she had the last sexual intercourse she had with Mr. Leo, correct? Correct. Right. In this video, did was in the video that was on Twitter, was there any crying in that video? Did not appear to have any crying. Any crying or or any um, source of resist resisting crying, fighting words? No. Any in, in this in the particular video on Twitter? Not in the video from Twitter. Okay, there we go. Uh, I move down just a little bit, I have a few more questions. Um, you stated that on March 24th was the last intercourse that they had, and then March 30th was the report. Um, were there any communications to your knowledge in between the 24th and the 30th? She stated she changed her number and had stopped all communication after she left the location. Do Miss, did you ask, or if you, to your knowledge, do Miss Newell have any uh, social media? She stated she had deleted hers. I do not know if she has any others now. And the, uh, the same way that you were, went back to retrieve Twitter, I'm assuming you sent a subpoena to Twitter, correct? We sent a search warrant to Twitter. We are still waiting to receive that back. Do you plan on sending a search warrant for Ms. Newell's uh, social media? We do not have a social media for Ms. Newell. Okay. Um, on, let's backtrack just a little bit to March 24th. Um, my understanding that Ms. Well stated uh, she someone ordered her Uber on the day that she wanted to, to leave, correct? Yes. All right. And you also stated that he told her to go. Originally, yes. Originally told her to go. Um, I'm not too familiar with the housing, but can you describe the house? Is it a multi-story? Um, if you can just give me a brief description of how the house is set up. The house is a single family, two-story house. Okay. And... Um, from your understanding of Mr. Leo's bedroom, would that be upstairs? Uh, from my understanding, yes, but she did not state it occurred in his bedroom. Okay, but the entry and exit to the house would be downstairs on a base level, correct? Yes. Okay. And um, you stated that once the Uber uh, did arrive, um, her opportunity to leave, she decided that she wanted to say goodbye to Mr. Leo, correct? Correct. All right, so Mr. But Leo he also wanted to say goodbye to her. 
right? You didn't mention that Mr. Alejo went to retrieve um, Miss Noel. Miss Noel went to Mr. Alejo herself, correct? Yes. You also stated that it was his request to say goodbye, correct? Yes. Okay. Judge, and would you mind if I expanded a little bit more on that? You're not my witness. You're okay. Ms. Pasmino's witness. Essentially, okay. because he is the leader, his requests are more like demands. All right. Do you have any... Um, I don't want to jump too too far back into that. I was trying to stay on task, but you you stated that because he's the leader. Um, how do you have any affirmation that he's a leader of a, a, a sex? Just wanted to know. Not only did he tell us that he is God to these people, but he has admitted he was the leader of this group as well as has multiple social media outlets where he posts his teachings, as well as um, his followers being called servants and pawns all right so you so there was a statement given by mr Delaney. yes okay, and what did you learn from that statement and let's you start when did, when was that statement given objection your honor at this point i'm going to the information about his statements irrelevant to probable cause of the charges and so at this point yeah, i think it's, it's just a fishing to, expedition yeah i think it has some probative value i'm gonna allow it go ahead counsel overall uh, uh, when was the statement? Uh, when did you uh, come into first contact with Mr. Leo? We spoke with Mr. Bishop on April 14th, 2022. He was brought to headquarters while executing a search warrant on his residence. Mr. Bishop was read his Miranda rights and agreed to give a statement with us. Mr. Bishop's denied raping anyone and essentially said he was a ladies man so he didn't have to rape anybody he did state that they had sex that night but he did not see it as rape and he said excuse me you correct keep on um he stated that the film of them having sex had been consensual of them filming it but he continued to deny any allegations did he mention any other postings, any sexual? He stated that they post sexual content as uh, in education. And upon your question with Ms. Noel, did you ever ask her about the educational posting of the videos? No, I did not ask her about the educational value of the videos. Yeah, for Mr. Leo's statements itself. Um, and I'll move to the questions. I'm sorry, you're you broke up in and out. What was that question? No, that was quite I'm sorry, I was just letting you know I was done with Mr. Leo's questions, and I have a few more questions for you, and we should be done here. Um to the I'm trying to backtrack to where I was at. Okay, so we have Miss Newell, just to bring it back, we have Miss Newell now in the upstairs with Mr. Alejo, correct? Correct. On. Right, you stated that he he requested a hug? He essentially, yes. he essentially requested to say goodbye. Requested to say goodbye. And you stated, and in your testimony, you stated that you felt she couldn't leave. I'm sorry, you're... You broke in and out. I wasn't able to hear the full question. Um, in your testimony, did you ever know that she can't speak? Uh, Mr. Edie, uh, your your um, audio is spotty. So i um, not sure what's happening because I, I heard the same thing twice where you just had okay, the words went out. Is it better to hit me this way? I don't know. Let's try it. Okay, I'm going to try to hold it this way and have nothing covering the microphone. All righty. All right, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. All right. Um, your testimony today uh, was that Ms. Newell never stated that she felt she couldn't leave, correct? She was unable to get away from his grasp, and she felt that if she tried to leave, he would order the other followers to abuse her. 
So she had fear of her safety. And that was her belief. That was her belief, correct? Correct. And it was also her experience prior to all these other incidents. All right. Um, and I missed earlier, what was the history? How long has she been a member of this cult? She stated three to four years. Okay. And you also stated that there were other times in which she was, I guess, safe to say in and out, came, gone, come, gone, come and go, come and go. Yes, she stated she had lived with them, I believe, twice before then. All right. Um, I guess last two questions. Um, upon the search of the house, was anything other than phones confiscated? All material that uh, essentially could do any kind of recording, since we didn't know what the recording was taken on, as well as marijuana found, from my understanding. And the last portion broke out to broke out from my phone when you were testifying. Um, you stated that Miss. Uh, Ms. Noel left that night, correct? The next morning. Um, essentially, it started in the early hours of 324. And in the morning time around 9 a.m. was when she ended up leaving the location. Um, there were multiple, were there people in the house during the time of the sexual intercourse on March 24? I believe so. Did you reach out to any of those uh, potential witnesses or anyone who would be in the house for any, any statements? We spoke to a few of his followers. Most of them did not want to give us a statement. All right. So other than the statement you have from Ms. Newell and the statement you have from Mr. Leo, you have no other statements concerning March 24th, the sexual encounter that happened in Mr. Leo's house? Yes. Okay. All right, um, Judge, I have no further questions. Ms. Pasmino, any redirect? Yes, Your Honor. Detective Panosian, do you see Mr. Eligio Bishop present um, on this Zoom call here today? Yes, ma'am. Can you just please identify what he's wearing? An orange jumpsuit and appears to be a white long sleeve under it. And he's the individual that you secured warrants for? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And Detective Panosian, I know that the defense spent some time over um, Mr. Bishop supposedly making requests, and I wanted you to elaborate. It's your understanding from the inner workings of his group that his requests are seen as demands. They're seen as orders um, or demands because of the fact that he is their leader, he is their God, um, he is seen as the person that they do anything for. And um, from your investigation, and your understanding of how his group works, if they were, did not comply with these orders or demands, would things happen to them? Yes, he would order other members to strike the person. And this is something that has been observed on multiple videos with multiple um, of his members, correct? Correct. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, there's no other um, further questions for Detective Mr. Mr. Edie, any recross? Um, one question. Okay, make sure my mic was on. Um, and these videos that you obtained of uh, these uh, these demands of, of, I guess, actual uh, sex of, of violence or acts of violence, where Miss Newell pre precisely were. Um, detected to be in any of these videos? Not from my knowledge right now. Um, most of the videos that we observed, she was not in them. All right, and of any of the quote unquote alleged victims in that, were you able to give any statements to those alleged victims? No, like I said, most of his followers would not give us statements. Understood, no further questions. All right. Uh, State have any other witnesses? No other witnesses, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Uh, Edie, you have any witnesses? No. Uh, lawyers, argument, Mr. Edie? Yes. Um, 
judge our acts if we just you know go down and we start with uh, the basis of I guess the the revenge porn. Um, there was a a, a bold, uh, I guess a clear line of statement on what the the law reads that you know sexual content can be posted um, obviously with uh, the consent of of two of uh, acts. Um, I asked questions directly that would show um, that there was no way here given evidence that will allow to determine if the the sexual acts and the videos that were actually posted um, here were not consensual. Um, there will be, there was, I guess, obviously the only videos that we have that ties into this would allege that there would have been some crying or some type of resistance. And the video that was allegedly posted here, it seems that according to talk to Mr. Leo, that these videos were in posted of sexual educations. Um, the opportunity uh, existed on an occasion to ask Mr. Ask Mr. Noel that if these videos were part of the education in which it failed to do so. So what we have is Mr. Leo letting you know that these videos was posted into a sexual educational class. And if it was to be, you know, disproved that the opportunity exists throughout this investigation, which has not done so. Um, I also don't see any forms or anything other than a mere act of a belief, a strong belief that Ms. Newell believed that this was posted in act of her leaving, um, but also in that statement to counter that she has been in this quote, quote unquote, for three to four years and have left on other previous times. But for some, I guess, ideal reason, this one particular time it's now being posted for some alleged uh, act. So I state that um, the grounds or basis of the uh, factors here to determine that this case has not been met by the state and that those cases are uh, on the revenge porn matters uh, to be dismissed. If we go up down to the false imprisonment case, um, precisely, um, I, testimony was was very clear that at uh, some point, Miss Miss Newell ordered uh, Uber, had someone order her Uber that she was able to leave and that it was upon her own request that she wanted to go back. So the idea or sense of fear tends to be diluted or negated when she actually decided to travel from at us, assuming um, the exit point downstairs and go all the way up upstairs to meet Mr. Alejo. Oh, I think it says my phone dropped out. Okay, I'm back. Um, to go up to meet Mr. Alejo, her alleged, um, I guess, uh, assault uh, or assaults are here to go up to say goodbye in which I believe uh, nothing more came out of this situation than a last minute or a last hurrah of a, a consensual sex belief of, of a goodbye after that. Um, uh, the only sense of confinement was a hug and that she feared that she couldn't leave um, his grip or his grasp. Um, last we shoot up so I asked that there is no no determination of false imprisonment and that none of the elements was met on behalf of the state. Um, last, we go look up at rape and the carnal knowledge um, without consent. Um, there's obviously if, no way to confirm or dip, disprove that um, the video that was posted on Twitter is the same as the, the video. Um, and obviously would be from testimony would be differences that this was that. So only thing we have is a, 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 a statement from Ms. Newell saying that sex did have in Mr. Leo who consented that they did actually have sex and his belief that it was consensual. She said that it wasn't consensual, no questions or anything was test testified about any previous sexual as it wouldn't make a difference. Um, DNA, because we both know that they have sex. So um, here we just basically have a he say, she say that they did previously have sex, they agreed to have sex and um, another statement saying that they didn't have sex. So I feel that um, there's not enough evidence presented in either or nor cases that we have presented today and that all cases should be uh, dismissed and um, uh, dismissed now and not to be further pushing, put for, pursued up to superior court and bounded over. Ms. Pazmino, argument? Yes, Your Honor. Um, and addressing the prohibition on neuter or sexually explicit, electronic transmission, we do ask the court to bind all three over as felonies, even though one of the warrant was for a misdemeanor. I think Mr. Edie is kind of misplaced when he um, recites the law. The law doesn't require that the videos that are posted and the content that's in the videos be of consensual nature. It requires that the person did not consent to the posting of those videos. Um, and as long as those videos were electronically transmitted or posted, um, whether it's a photograph or a video on some type of social media website, um, sh uh, sharing site or web page or message board, if they were posted without the consent 
of the victim that's in that video and they were po posted for the purposes of harassing or taunting the individual and um, it shows explicit conduct then it's a felony and it is that is probable cause for the warrant for that and it should be bound over you heard the testimony from detective panosium miss newell did not consent to the posting um, this was posted after she left and what she believes um, was in response to her leaving the group and potentially being taunted and harassed we've submitted evidence about what the cult culture was like with Mr. Bishop and what he would order and demand and require his members to do when people left or disrespected him. And so based on that, there's enough probable cause for the prohibition on nude or sexually explicit electronic transmissions. And moving forward to the rape and false imprisonment, there's also enough probable cause for the warrants on these case, and we ask that those be bind over as well. Um, the fact that I think the defense tries to make it a big deal that Miss Newell has left over the years and come back to the cult, I'm sure this court's familiar with domestic violence relationships and how individuals will leave and go back routinely because of the hold that someone has over them, because of the threat, the fear that they have for their life. This is a situation in which Miss Newell was part of a cult and where the Mr. Bishop, who somehow self-proclaims himself as God, as the leader of this organization, orders and controls other individual members in the group. And when they didn't do what they wanted him to do, when they didn't do what he asked of them, he would order some type of physical violence toward them. So there was a culture of fear with Mr. Bishop. This is evidenced by multiple videos that Mr. Bishop himself has posted, that other members have posted, that Detective Pinozium has testified that she has observed. And Miss Noah, at the end of the day, said that she told Mr. Bishop no multiple times. She told him that she wanted to leave. He held her, said that she could not leave, and specifically said that he was, she was his property and that he, she would not be allowed to leave, and then proceeded to rape her without her permission, engaged in intercourse with her without her permission. She essentially said no multiple times and then let it happen in a way that because she was fear for her life, she feared for her safety. The law is clear. Any type of consent that occurs due to threats, coercion, or duress is not consent at all, especially when there is fear surrounding it. So based on the testimony, based on the evidence submitted, um, there is enough probable cause for all of these charges to be bound over to Superior Court. All right, thank you very much, lawyers. Uh, based on the evidence and testimony, I am going to find that the state has met its burden. With respect to the electronic transfer of the uh, videos, um, the detective testified that she saw three videos uh, of the alleged victim and the defendant here uh, engaged in sexual intercourse. And um, I was, it was a surprise to me that Twitter allows uh, such videos to be posted. Um, but uh, the consent with respect to the law does not belong to Twitter, it belongs to the victim. And the victim here um, uh, reported to the detective that she did not give consent. And so whether or not there was consent, I think is a jury issue. Uh, and so a trier of fact should determine whether or not um, uh, it was done with consent or without consent since both parties have two, two different stories. And so I am gonna bind um, those over. Now, with respect to the difference between the misdemeanor and the felony, I haven't heard anything that would make me wanna change these um, charges because the statute, um, states that uh, it's a felony um, under B1A to post it to a website, and then it's a misdemeanor if uh, if it's posted via other electronic means. I haven't heard what the uh, whether or not there are other electronic means, and so I'm I'm not going to modify that charge. With respect to the rape charge, I do find the state has met its burden. Uh, Ms. Uh, Newell indicated that she wanted to go back and say goodbye for whatever either reason, whether it was his uh, request or, or her decision. Um, but her testimony, or at least what she reported to the detective, is that uh, the defendant told her, you my property, you my bitch, you're not allowed to leave. Uh, and he started holding on her and wouldn't let her leave. That's her testimony. 
And so a trier of fact gets to determine whether or not that testimony is credible or whether or not to believe that Mr. Bishop uh, did not see it as a rape. Since he did admit it to the sex, he, see, he didn't see it as a rape, she does. That's a jury question and it has to go in front of a jury. With respect to the false imprisonment, I believe there is sufficient testimony. Not only did uh, the victim report she couldn't leave, but the person who called the Uber, um, she had to call them and say, look, I'm gonna have to sneak out at some other time. So I think that's enough to go in front of a jury and let a trier of fact determine whether or not uh, there was false imprisonment. So that's why I do find that the state has met its burden, Mr. Bishop. All that means is that your case is gonna be bound over to the superior court. Uh, now, Mr. Eady, because of the rape charge, it's a superior court only bond. I can't do anything about that bond or any of the other bonds. Uh, so, Mr. Eady, anything else on Mr. Bishop? Uh, no, that would be a judge. All right. Uh, anything else from the state? No, that is it, Your Honor. All right. May so, Mr. Detective Panosian and I be excused once this concludes. Mr. Bishop, that concludes your probable cause hearing. I want to ask that you follow the direction of my deputy. It looks like you have a question. You have a question for your attorney. Certainly, you don't have a question for me. All right, let me remind you, sir, and, and I'm, I'll ask the deputy to go ahead and unmute. Um, let me remind you, sir, that uh, this hearing is still being recorded. So whatever you say here today will be recorded. If you say anything about your case, it will be used against you um, um, at a later hearing, more specifically a trial. But I'm gonna let your attorney um, speak to you because if you do have a question for the court, uh, I would advise against it, but I'm gonna let your attorney uh, speak to you before I hear from you, sir. Mr. Edie, would you like to um, uh, speak with uh, Mr. Because he has his hand up. I don't know what he has his hand up for. Um, if, it, if, it can be, if it can be in a breakout, then yes. If it's not in a breakout, then no, I would not. Well, here, here's my problem. My next hearing starts at 10 o'clock. And so if I had enough time to put y'all in a breakout room, I would do that. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, given the constraints of Zoom, um, if it's going to take more than one minute, um, then that's going to make me late for my next hearing. Let me check I, with my assistant to see if we're still on for the 10 o'clock hearing. Keonta? We are, Judge. We are. Okay. Well, Judge, um, I just on the record that I advise against any uh, statement to be made Mr. Uh, against for Mr. Leho to make here on, on the, the, the Zoom here. So I would just be against my advice and I would just let him know that I would not um, advise that, say anything right now. And All right, just Mr. Bishop, you've heard from me. You've heard from your attorney. You still want to address the court or you still have a question? No. All right, then uh, I think that's a wise move. I'm going to ask that you uh, please follow the direction of my deputies and lawyers uh, and detective. You all are excused. Okay, thank you. So the factual allegations as it stands are that on March 30th, 2022, the Cab County law enforcement met with our alleged victim in this case, who is 27 years old, but I'll, um, will not refer, I will not refer to her by name, but she did meet with law enforcement um, and informed them that an incident occurred at 2993 Arbor Chase in DeKalb County. Um, she informed law enforcement that she was part of a cult that had been referred to carbonation or melanination and that a few days before she had left that cult. She told law enforcement that because she decided to leave, as a result, she believed the defendant proceeded to post sexually explicit videos of her on social media as revenge. Um, what I'm talking about is that there were three sexually explicit videos posted to Twitter under an account named Three God. Um, that's important for the court to consider because the defendant refers to himself by a number of names, one of them being Three God and one of them being Nature Boy. On this Twitter account, he posted three sexual, three videos of our victim engaging in sexual intercourse with him. Um, the victim stated that she believed he did this or caused members of his cult to post this because she had decided to leave a few nights before. Um, she did not, while she gave consent to have the videos recorded, she did not give consent for the videos to be posted. And because she did not give consent for those videos to be posted, and the defendant did that in purposes of harassing her and for other people to view, and 
um, because she left with the coal, he was charged with three felonies for those three videos. In reporting this to law enforcement, she informed law enforcement that a few days prior, specifically um, around March 24th of 2022, when she tried to leave the cult, that the defendant had a few members of his cult. Um, to give the court some background, he essentially has six wives in this cult. Um, our victim was one of those wives. On the day that she tried to leave, he had the women essentially kind of surround her and belittle her and basically hit her and say that she was not going to leave, that she essentially was nothing without the cold and that she could not leave. That day, she goes back and forth between wanting to leave. Um, she's texting a friend, trying to arrange an Uber, misses the Uber. Um, there is some back and forth and that's corroborated through text messages. But she eventually decides she wants to leave. Other members of the cult tells her, hey, come upstairs, Mr. Bishop, the defendant wants to see you before you leave. I anticipate that the evidence would show that she did go upstairs to meet with him, um, despite the kind of tumultuous relationship that existed in this cult between him and her and the other members of the cult, she still had some feelings for him. So she goes up to him to say bye. While she goes up, she is in a room with him, just him and her. And it's at that time she says that he does not allow her to leave the room. He says essentially that she cannot leave and he proceeds to rape her. She said that she told him no multiple times and that she did not want to, um, but that he insisted that he didn't have to rape her and that he wasn't going to do anything that she didn't want to, but that he could kill her if he wanted to. Um, and this is things that he has kind of repeated to her over the time that she has been in this, um, this cult. And so I anticipate that the evidence will show at that time she kind of gives in. She doesn't say anything. She doesn't say, yes, I want to do anything. She had repeatedly said no. Um, but she doesn't know what to do in that moment. The defendant proceeds to rape her on the bed in that room. Um, I anticipate that she would testify to trial, that she was crying, that it was physically apparent that she was not engaged in these sexual acts and that defendant continued to proceed with um, the acts until he was finished. That time she um, essentially waits till everyone is asleep. I believe there is only one other member in the house that is awake at the time she decides to leave and she leaves in the early morning hours of the night. That is the basis of the rape and the false imprisonment warrants that the defendant has against him. She leaves, um, she goes and stays with some friends and then a few days later when she finds out about the videos being posted on social media um, and sees them, she contacts law enforcement and reports all of this information. I gave you that background because at the previous bond hearing in front of Judge Bethel, we did play some videos, not the sexually explicit videos because that would not be appropriate here for court, but we did play other videos of the defendant where he instructs women to hit other women in his cult. And I played that before the court because it was important for the court to consider the context of the cult and kind of the environment that our victim was in and why she would feel that she didn't really have any other choice but to um, let things happen or she couldn't leave on that particular night. Um, these videos repeatedly show the defendant um, speaking profane language at the women, but also instructing women to hit and strike other women and berating them and degrading them. And so this was an example to the court to show how he was a risk to the community, but also a risk to our victim. I, and so I wanted to summarize that for the court, that this is a, Mr. Bishop is part of a cult that films everything. They put everything on the internet. I would not be surprised if this also ends up on the internet and there are commentary about it, but they film everything. They put it all on the internet for the world to see. And Mr. Bishop essentially thrives off of um, degrading others, including women and instructing others to commit acts of violence against each other. And so that's important for the court to consider. When we look at the Ayala factors, what was discussed at the previous hearing and what the state will stand by here today is that in looking at every single factor, 
he is a risk and he should not be given bond again. Again, the previous court, Judge Bethel, denied bond and found that he met every, he was a significant risk on each of those factors. Nothing has changed. He still presents a risk. And I think that is very evident by the fact that there are members of his cult still reaching out to the victim to persuade her to drop the charges. So we would ask the court to deny bond and find that he meets all of those risk factors under Ayala and that he should not be granted bond. Thank you. Is the case scheduled for a uh, grand jury? It is, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Eady. All right, uh, Judge. Before I uh, call this and client to, uh, I just wanted to uh, put a few things uh, for clarification that I, I was not the attorney um, at the time of the first bond hearing. So um, I would argue that things have changed, at least in the perception of when I received the case and from what I learned from the first previous bond. Um, before then, I would just want to address the first issue, which would have nothing to do with the witnesses, which would be the flight risk. Um, uh, I see it stated that there was an FTA. Um, in that FTA, um, I believe that that case was ultimately finished. The Hawaii situation was brought up um, before your honor, and I believe that that was in 2020. My understanding is that that was during the COVID protocol, and um, the reason that that became such a big issue was because um, of the amount of people who were uh, active with him and which they perceived to be a cult, in which um, this is what uh, Mr. Bishop and has been known as for a spiritual teaching. He is in um, perceived to have went to school to be an ordained minister, in which his teachings have been followed by Netflix, BBC, Discovery, um, uh, uh, Spotify, and Apple, all in which people have given him contracts. These are people who have followed and followed his documentary for his spiritual spiritual teaching and his teaching evolving around um, promoting a healthier eating um, and promoting a healthier lifestyle. Um, and as far as these the names of the nature boy, which will follow into the character of who he is. And then Mr. Bishop himself, I will be giving you more so about Mr. Bishop himself. Now, the um, those things of the allegations of videos I did not see or was not present, but I would think that Netflix and these people who have paid him thousands and thousands of dollars to document and to film him, not just his uh, recordings, but the recordings themselves of their production would not be pushing out any type of, of violence or any type of following of someone who will be doing so much to the far right of the perspective of being uh, some bad things there. So I would keep that into consideration about the following and the, the use of the word cult, um, that this is a spiritual teaching to promote healthy eating, um, healthy lifestyle, and the spiritual being about itself. And the reason that he has been in those places was to promote those things. Some people may consider them to be a uh, distraction to the, the world or the the, the laws that has been there in which he has been uh, told to leave. And if it was so, he would pack up this stuff and go. And in that process of actually having followers going back to set up places for him to reside or live at, um, I would uh, disagree with that. What happened is if he goes to Mexico or Costa Rica and those places, when he is um, asked to leave, there are people who decide to follow him and come with him legally over to the states to continue to follow it. And after this pickup of the ch of the charges, these people have now resorted back home in which he was allowed. He basically, you know, told them you can go home and as I fight this case, you can get ahead and go home. And these people now have went back home, but they have remained loyal to the teachings of Mr. Bishop. And that's what we have here, not more so of setting up places to abscond. And to, to, to refute that, what I would ask for is simple, uh, uh, a 24 hour curfew, an uh, ankle monitor. There's plenty of things that the, uh, the, the the county of DeKalb to put into place that will assure him that he will be. I'm not too sure of his passport status, but he is more than willing to give up his passport um, and more than willing to put himself on a 24 hour ankle monitor, uh, but for the release of him to be able to work in which he has two jobs that will be outside of any type of social media, any type of documentaries that he has actual working um, in his in his uh in, in the county here which would be a barber shop that he has opened up he is a certified barber and he has a landscaping business that he has as running by close family members and friends that he would be able to go to um so that i would assume that to be uh satisfactory for his uh risk or flight risk and he has been uh uh, uh 
resident here in DeKalb County uh, since at least um, dating back to 2014. Um, so I will present to you that he's not a flight risk. Um, to get to the risk to community, that's why I would be willing to present the uh, character witnesses. Um, and if it's allowed to, I have uh, up to three, but if you would one for one, two, however you would decide to, I would just like to present them and they have written statements that are no longer than a paragraph in which they would just uh, like to read to you um, here before your honor. Okay, go ahead. Um, the first one I will call if available would be Mr. Ryan Wilson. Mr. Wilson, available? Yes, I'm here. All right, Can you Mr. Hear me? Yes. Um, uh, I received your, your statement in which it wasn't notarized, so the judge will allow you to just read your statement. What I would like to do is swear you in first, judge, if I'm uh, assistant, if I'm allowed to. Go ahead. May you raise your right hand? Yep. All right, and do you swear that one of you will give would be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God to this honorable court. I do. All right. Uh, Mr. Wilson, may you please state your first and last name and spell it out for this honorable court? Uh, my name is Ryan Wilson. That's R-Y-A-N-W-I-L-S-O-N. All right, and precisely, um, I would just ask you a, a basic question. Um, how long have you known uh, Alejo Bishop? Uh, about four years. All right. And your four years, uh, explain to the court uh, the impact or the positive or negative, whichever way it may be, impact that he has uh, if, and impacted on your life and uh, to the families around in the four years that you have known him. Yeah, what I can share is that my family consists of me, my wife, a 10-year-old daughter, and then we actually have a baby on the way. And uh, one of uh, Alicio's uh, teachings with me is just the friendship and the bond that we've had together and, and him always being there for me whenever I needed to, you know, pick up the phone and ask questions or need help uh, in regards of maybe my life or, you know, my relationship with my wife or different things going on in my life. Um, and one other thing that has been uh, his teaching that really affected me was going and bringing awareness around food and teaching about, uh, you know, chemicals. Okay, we're going beyond I already indicated we were Mr. Edie. And this isn't a redo. This is an opportunity to get a redo at Bond. It's in reconsideration, any additional information. So I don't don't want to get into to all of that. I got you. Um, Mr. Wilson, I would just be uh, imprecise. Would you just give um, the court um, in your relationship, I'm sorry, someone is falling, in your relationship to um, how he has impacted you, and then as far as the community in which you was going, his risk to the community, anything that he has done for the community in which you guys lived in when y'all shared together. Just to yeah, what, 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 yeah, what I can share is that he's he's given a lot of information out to the community because he, he's trying to reach out to the community and help the community in many different videos. Like we have said, there's many videos online and there's many videos about him trying to help. And what I can say is just to, to make this real short is, for my family, he's always been there to help, always. Always, always, always been there, just one one phone call away to help in any which way that he can be because he just wants to give back that reaching hands and help out the community. That's what I'll share. And one final question, has he ever been a danger to you and your family? Absolutely not. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Your Honor, may I? Yes, no further questions. Mr. Wilson, are you a member of um, his cult? No, I'm not. And have you ever lived at the 2993 Arbor Chase Drive in DeKalb County? No, I have not. And have you ever seen any of the videos of him um, directing women to hit other women? I have seen videos, yes. Oh, you have seen those videos? I've seen videos that you're referring to, yes. Okay. And it is still your testimony here today under oath that after seeing those videos, you feel that he is not um, a danger to the community. I, I do not believe he is a, a danger to the community. He never has been. He never okay. has been, and, and that's just my, my views, yes. And that's your opinion, even after seeing those videos? Yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, Mr. Eady, have another witness? Yes, um, Ms. Adriana Johnson. Ms. Johnson, uh, are you there? Yes, hi, how, how are you doing? I'm doing good in yourself. Um, would you uh, please raise your right hand uh, for this honorable court? And do you swear mm -hmm. that the only you would give would be the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? 
Yes. All right, may you please state your full first and last name for this court? Yes, my name is Adriana Johnson. All right, and may you spell it? A-U-D-R-I-A-N-A, -A, my last name Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N. All right, um, how long have you, uh, appreciate it, you can put your right arm down. Um, how long have you known Mr. Uh, Aleo Bishop? It's been more than three years now. Okay, um, precisely um, in a paraphrasable type of uh, substance, could you just explain to me or explain to the court, um, if any, good or bad, um, how has he has impacted you and then the community in which y'all shared during your time together? Yes. Well, I'm here to say that Leo has been a dear friend of mine for more than three years now. And as a true friend, he has always been there for me, even in my darkest moments. Um, he has always been able to provide me with great advice and emotional support anytime, like even when I needed it the most. And unlike a lot of other people, I know Alihio personally and not just from the internet. And if you know him, you know that he is a joy to uh, be around and he is a pleasure to work with. Alihio is always upbeat and spreading positivity. He is a very courageous, uh, charming and down to earth person. Um, Knowing Alihio, Alihio he, ha he is a very, very compassionate person, always willing to help people whenever he can. Um, and just from me, like I said, knowing him personally, uh, he has always operated in the purest, with the purest heart and intent. All right. And, and uh, his, you, his morals. His morals. Work with him in the community. What are some of those things that you have done or you have witnessed and you say have done things in the community? What are some of those things? Yeah, he has um he has brought people together in, in beautiful ways. You get what I'm saying? He uh he has traveled, traveled around just and with with the with the spiritual teaching and the spiritual uh knowledge, he has allowed people to gain divine knowledge itself that help us navigate, you know, on a path that can, you know, it can be very overwhelming, you know, just dealing with worldly things and all the troubles in the world. He has always brought people together, like like I've been around him when it's like big groups and um, just the way he organizes things, just the way he put, puts, puts things together. He is a great leader. He is a great leader. And I have always known Alio to operate with the purest heart and intent. Um, I mean, morals and principles are his top priority, you know, and I would hope that the courts can find it in their judgment today to, you know, grant him bail and for him to be released after serving an extended amount of time thus far. Uh, I, I would hope that the, uh, the the courts, you know, could just find it in their judgment, you know, to grant okay. him, grant him his bail. All right. And one uh, final question. Um, are, are you a member of um, his spiritual teachings? Um, Yes, I do subscribe to his. Uh, I do subscribe to his teachings. I've never been a member of the actual cult, but I do subscribe to his teachings. His teachings is universal. It's not, you know, it's not nothing that no one can't, you know, uh, understand. If you sit and if you listen with the open mind and open heart, is 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 facts. It's irrefutable facts. Thank you. No further questions for his witness. Thank you. Yes, me now. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Johnson, so I know you said you subscribe to the teachings, but you're not a member of Carbon Nation, correct? Yes. And you didn't live at the 2993 Arbor Chase Drive in DeKalb County or any residence with Mr. Bishop? No. Okay. And you were not present the night that these incidents of alleged occurred back on March 24th of 2022. Is that correct? No, I was not. Okay. And so you have no knowledge of what actually took place on that day. Um, actually, I do have it have some knowledge, and that is only because the alleged victim did a live interview. Okay. To where she let me let me let me, let me stop you there. I don't mm -hmm. want to know if you have some knowledge from what's been passed around on the internet. Were you actually present that day? No, I wasn't. I've never okay. been to that. That's all I asked. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I'm just going off of what the alleged victim has uh, stated okay. herself. All right. Right. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. I appreciate it. Okay, thank, thank you, Sri. All right, and I have one last witness, uh, Ms. Maya Singleton. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Singleton. How are you? I'm fine. All right, may you please raise your hand? And do you swear that the testimony you give before this honorable court would be the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I'll be God? I do. 
Yes, all right, you put your right hand down. Um, uh, how long have you known, Mr. Oh, well, sorry, may you please state your name and spell your name for the Honorable Court? My name is Maya Singleton, M A apostrophe A T S I N G L E T O N. Okay, and um, how long have you known Mr. Bishop? Nearly six years now. All right, what's your relationship with Mr. Bishop? We are friends. Okay. Um, and, and precise with the time that you have shared together, could you uh, share with any experiences, good or bad, that you have um, you have witnessed and or worked with him in regards to him and contributing to the community in which y'all share together? I can. Our friendship has meant to me, um, as I am not a resident of Georgia, <laughs> so. Um, Be precise as far as. The, anything such as any outreach or anything that you have seen him given back, anything just precisely with him in the community in which y'all shared, rather it was I've seen him offer counsel and support to people, not just words. I've seen him offer financial support to people as part of the community, as well as myself and counsel. Okay. Um, and are you a, a, a quote unquote active member of um, his spiritual teachings or regarded in this court as a cult? No, I'm not part of the cult. Okay. Um, and that would be the uh, only questions that I have for this witness. Thank you, Ms. I have no I have no questions for Ms. Singleton. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Anything further, Mr. E? Uh, and nothing further as far as witnesses. I would just finish up my argument as far as the remaining factors um, of, of the case, and then I will be done with my, my presentation here. Okay. All right. So, um, Judge, I will go back. I will tell you that Mr. Bishop um, is, is a 30-year-old African-American male born in New York. Um, he was born with a troubled childhood. As an infant, he lost both his, his mother and his father. Um, and through that experience, he was able to make himself what I would consider to be a, a useful man of the community. He's the father of four children um, eight, from their ages of 13, 8, 4, and 3, and is currently active and involved in all of their lives. Um, at some point, he became an ordained minister and a certified barber. Um, in January of 2014, Mr. B opened a successful uh, barbershop here in uh, the state of Georgia. Uh, the address will be 6013 Highway 42, which is called Bishop HD's Barbershop, um, he, in, in which that barbershop itself has held many community events. He has led chess tournaments, which allow people um, places to go and re give out uh, free haircuts for the children in the community, as well as to learn um, a, a mind, uh, a game of chess. And most people take chess as, as something that would be taught throughout the lifelong lessons of kids to be instilled into them. He employed many different people from different backgrounds. One of the things that he promoted was um, asserting people who picked up a trade who was previously incarcerated, who picked up the trade of barbering um, while in jail. And upon their release, those are the people in which he actually was given jobs to and allowed them to be certified barbers at his job. Um, Bishop's uh, HD Barbershop uh, Cuts is actually still open. Um, it's still operating and it is uh, led by one of uh, his closest friends named Lex. Um, once he left his barber shop, he then went on to his journey of a spiritual teacher, which he picked up a, a, a learning tool in which there. And part of that teaching is, again, as previously explained, has been followed and picked up by documentaries of very big known uh, Discovery Channel, Netflix, Amazon, and things of that nature. Um, he has also, uh, he's also an author. He's given out plenty of books. One of his main books is called The B6 Diet, which he wrote on how to eat healthy and more of an organic. There's nothing different in his book that you'll be able to not look up in a cookbook from, from Kroger or, or Publix or anything like that. It's just the teaching of eating organic food. And, um, and it's not just limited to that. You have uh, plenty of these books in which they are all free. Um, they are all on, on Spotify, they're on Apple Music, or anywhere that you can go buy on Kindle to get these books. He's authored over 17 books. that are available on all platforms. He also has a large catalog on his influential teaching. At that point, I believe, is where we get the disconnect from the social media in which he has now been placed with his character in which people know him as now as the nature boy or or the, the, the sixth god. And these things have become a character in which Mr. Bishop and Mr. Cal 
character and the character of Mr. Bishop and the six God or the three God or what have been has been a disconnect. As a person, you have heard from um, different witnesses that he is a great use of the community. Um, his platform is for spiritual teaching and for better uplifting in people and their health. Um, the followings are people who are still here active as full of support that is three of 3,000 that I could have presented and which I just chose not to. Um, these public teachings has attracted positive energy as well as the negative energy. It's offering of, of these teachings ranges from anywhere, not just on the, the, the basis of spirit. Right, I thought you said that these three are not a member of the group, correct? Yes, I, I'm sorry, I received the phone call, yes. These, those three members have right. stated that they're not members of, of the group and at the, at the time, I mean, these members are all over the world. Um, so I could try to bring a citizen someone in closer nature. Um, last, I would just tell you that um, Mr. Bishop has inspired a million people to, to, to just basically live a healthier lifestyle. Um, as I, I would proceed to tell you that he has been in future contracts with plenty of people um, on social media as current as today. There are people that every time someone logs in, you get uh, what they call certified uh, checks, which was on Instagram as official uh, pages of such as Netflix or things like that, who are in tune and follow have reached out to me in ways that they can actually support um, and help him in this process. Um, with that being said, I think that he has invested a good relationship in helping out and employing people. He has not harmed anyone or is not a danger to the community. And as far as as the last option, which I think is something that would be super considerable. Um, obviously, we know where we're at in the discovery phase of this, but I would like to let you know that um, I have personally seen that the victim, the alleged victim, is currently active on, on social media. And when she's currently active on social media, she is actually still partaking with some of the people that are considered to be part of this cult. Um, as, as early as maybe just three, four days ago, um, she's in a, a working relationship and still following the teachings of Mr. Bishop. She's um, I believe to be in a relationship with another follower of his, of his, of his cult and a supreme follower, meaning someone who was actually possibly taking over and continuing the, uh, the teachings. And that's who she's with. So she has been in video, has been in live, is what they call it, live video, live teachings with some of these people who were considered to be, uh, make him a danger to her. But as of recent, I have seen these with my own two eyes of her actually on social media with these people who are um, members of this cult and she is still active with these people. So I would digress and say that he's not a danger to her or she's not afraid of him in any type of manner as she's actually lingering around and following the teachings and around the people in which she has a firsthand communication with. It. So um, I would allege that that you know, the state would have to look into that a little bit more as far as their witness. So with those being said, I would say that Mr. Bishop is entitled to a bond. I don't think that uh, that the ruling uh, in the first bond was incorrect. Things have changed. Uh, the victim is, is is actively being part of the people that he's around. Um, he is not a danger to the community. Um, there are witnesses who are here to testify that, that that he has helped them in a personal level. Um, I have listed out many of things that he has done prior to being picked up. And again, he stands before you an innocent man. I understand the charges that's alleged with him. Um, <laughs> I would love to go more in depth with some of the other uh, charges as that would be a discovery issue that would come up that would allege for the the um the other charges such as the re quote unquote revenge porn. Um I think that in discovery it would show completely differently that there have been times that that is part of his teaching. Part of the teaching is part of teaching safe sex and that this is something that has been previously in their history together. Um that is not being any type of revenge porn and that would show out in discovery. So overall I ask that to do set a reasonable bond. He's not a flight risk. He's not opposed to an ankle monitor. He's not opposed to any type of house arrest. He would be able to monitor his barber shop that would provide him income to be able to obtain an attorney. I think that he takes this quite serious. Um, he has obtained, uh, obtained need for representation throughout the case and that is not with the help of the big big businesses that have reached out to me personally to help in each way such as Netflix and Discovery that this has been coming through him personally to help retain. I think he takes this case very serious. This is not something that he's overlooking and that a bond is appropriate for this case that he will get, be able to get not just back to his teachings and he'll be okay if he has to be uh, you know, shut down on his teachers that he has actual work to get into, but the media for his family, he's active in his four kids' life and um, has been active throughout that process. We asked for a bond to be no, uh, set in no, no more than $100,000. Um, 
theoretically, I would ask for a $50,000 bond, but to be reasonable with the court, a $100,000 bond would suffice. And I allow Mr. Bishop to post bond with 24-hour um, services and an ankle monitor to uh, make sure that he will not uh, be a, considered a flight risk. Um, that would be it that I have for Mr. Bishop, and I would thank the court for your consideration. May blessings be upon you and your family. Thank you. Okay, what I, um, I, I'm concerned that actually this seems to be much of the same information that would have been presented or could have been presented before Judge Bethel. Uh, he heard all of the evidence on it. I've not heard anything this morning uh, that would cause the court to make a different decision uh, from the decision that was made back in May. Uh, so uh, I am going to um, deny your request for any um, modification or reconsideration of the decision that was made. Thank you, Your Honor. The state will prepare that order. I believe that um, that concludes my business before this court. And may all parties on this case be excused. Yes, everyone with the Bishop case may be excused. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Tabitha. Yeah, this is crazy.